I can play Cyberpunk, Atomic Heart, Forza and a bunch of other demanding games. On this. The smallest computer with the most powerful integrated graphics to date. Just imagine how fast technology is developing. The 4 nanometer processor inside is faster than the new Ryzen 5 7600X and the integrated GPU in this processor is faster than the once popular GTX 1050 Ti. The box from which would fit like 6 such PCs. Over the past few years, integrated graphics has made a serious leap in performance. You got ray tracing, modern architectures, everything. All that thanks to the crypto mining boom and the new wave of popularity of portable consoles. We have already reviewed a bigger Minis Forum computer with a dedicated GPU on board and it was a big surprise not only from the performance standpoint but also the cooling system. This time the case is even smaller but the hardware inside is even faster and more powerful and this is not some B-Link which have been massively advertised recently. This thing doesn't throttle and doesn't overheat. Anyway, this is MK. Today we will take a look at the coolest Team Red iGPU which for some reason was coupled with a way too powerful CPU. First, let's take a look inside and run through the specs. Unlike Ultrabox, the UM790 Pro allows you to replace both the SSD and RAM. In our version, there are two DDR5 modules at 5600MHz, 8GB each, which provide for about 60 to 80GB per second of bandwidth with delays of about 80 nanoseconds. High speed of memory operation in this case is extremely important since the iGPU uses it as video memory, and these figures are quite sufficient. The computer comes with a fast NVMe PCIe 4.0 512GB SSD by Kingston. Inside there is another unoccupied M.2 slot which we will use for our own SSD with all the software and games we test. Under the cooling system resides a 4 nanometer Ryzen 9 7940HS on Zen 4. For comparison, the desktop Ryzen 7000s are 5 nanometer, that is, the mobile CPUs of this lineup are more energy efficient, which means they maintain higher frequencies at the same TDP. And here's a question to AMD. Why, if you want to get the fastest iGPU, you also have to pay for the top end processor? Only the Mobile 8 core Ryzen 7000 series can boast of a powerful Radeon 780M RDNA 3 GPU with 12 compute units. If you don't need such a powerful CPU, you are also deprived of the top of the line graphics. For example, the 6 core Ryzen 7000 will have a Radeon 760M GPU with just 8 compute units which is at least a third slower and the 4 core CPU will have a Radeon 740M with just 4 units. The way I see it, the 8 core Ryzen is an overkill for this mini PC. The processor is so powerful in fact that the Cinebench R23 test scores more than 17,000 points in multi-thread. For comparison, the desktop 6 core Ryzen 5 7600X scores about 14 to 15,000 and this CPU is quite enough even for the RTX 1490. It would be a lot more sensible to give such a GPU to a 4 core Ryzen, which would also have a positive effect on its price. And now I'm gonna show you some magic. A 10 minute stress test in Cinebench R23 showed that even in such a small PC, the cooling system can cope perfectly well with a Ryzen 9 CPU. After setting the high performance mode in the BIOS, the processor hits its maximum allowed 65 watt TDP limit heating up to 85 degrees and at the same time it has already boosted up to 4.5 GHz. For a mobile CPU, this is definitely a win. Expensive laptops which usually come with such SSDs struggle a lot to achieve such results. In CPU-Z and in the 7Z benchmark, the result is similar to the desktop 7600X level. Let me remind you that this 6-core CPU now costs around $220. And finally, 3D Mark times Pi. Here you can see the poor balance between the CPU and the GPU the most vividly. The processor here is almost 10% faster than the 7600X, whereas the GPU is 7 times slower than the RTX 3080 Ti. Speaking of the results, it performs somewhere in between the popular GTX 1050 Ti and GTX 1650. The result for an iGPU is certainly impressive. Best Vegas solutions are somewhere around the GT 1030 level. And although the GTX 1650 is now the most popular card according to the Steam statistics, it is definitely not the fastest solution from 4 years ago. 
and in modern games that are known for poor optimization, it's far from good to be honest. Now let's move on to what we want to see the most, the games. The CPU part here will definitely not become the bottleneck, so all the weight will be carried by the integrated Radeon 780M. Let's start as usual with Cyberpunk. We set low graphic settings in Full HD with FSR at quality, that is, the real rendering resolution is 720p, and the result is pleasantly surprising, more than 50 FPS on average, while the GPU is fully loaded and is boosted above 2.5 GHz. But still, FSR is not DLSS, and the picture in 1080p is a bit too blurry even in the quality mode. You can do without upscaling though. At low settings in Full HD, the GPU performs at 40 frames per second. It's still playable for sure, although to my liking, it's a bit too little for a shooting game. But if you keep in mind the size of this machine and the fact that modern consoles run this game at 30 FPS, it doesn't look so bad anymore. Alright, let's go to Mexico. Forza Horizon 5 is a well-optimized game, so even at high quality settings without upscaling, the Radeon 780M has no problems. 60 frames per second, more than playable. A funny thing though, enabling just any upscale method be it FSR or XCSS only reduces the performance when it should be exactly the opposite. I found this thing only in Forza and taking into account the full playability of this game without any upscaling, let's just assume that this is not a bug but a feature. In Far Cry 6, which is specifically optimized for Radeon graphics, the 780M has no issues. In Full HD, with medium graphic settings without upscaling, the frame rate is about 45 to 50. If desired, you can turn on FSR for quality. Then the frame rate will grow to 60 to 70 FPS. But here, the AMD's proprietary upscaling method of its first version adds a bit too much blur. Also, Far Cry 6 has a rather simple implementation of ray tracing, and the RDNA 3 iGPU runs it quite well. When turning on DXR and FSR at quality, you can get up to 50 to 60 FPS. The progress has reached a level when RTX on is available even on iGPUs. Let's launch the Plague Tale Requiem. This game has extremely beautiful graphics and also serious requirements for the video card, so without any illusions, we set the graphics settings to low 1080p and performance mode, that is, the real rendering resolution is only 540p. And I must say, the Radeon 780M did it right. Yes, the picture is a bit blurry, but the frame rate, even in the market location, is absolutely playable, 45 to 50 FPS, and you can easily beat the entire game like that, no big deal. And to my surprise, this time there were no stutters. Alright then, after such results, we can try to fit this GPU with perhaps the most demanding game as of today, the PC port of The Last of Us. Of course, the graphics settings are low, but we left FSR at quality, and as a result, we got an average of 40 FPS. Yes, the picture quality leaves much to be desired, but it's definitely playable. And of course, we can't just skip the freshly released DLC for Atomic Heart with new guns and a swearing goose. You can destroy Soviet robots on your iGPU with low graphic settings in 1080p and FSR at quality. In this case, you can count on 50 to 60 FPS on average in open locations in battle. Playing in this mode is absolutely comfortable, and the graphics, thanks to Unreal Engine, look quite good even at low settings. And finally, let's try some eSports, just because. I mean, it's already clear that there will be no issues with them on such a powerful machine, but it's interesting to check something else. Is it possible to unlock the potential of fast monitors with this? In Dota 2, at the maximum graphic settings in 1080p, the frame rate is about 100. Slightly lower in the graphics, you can easily get 1.5 frames. In World of Tanks, at high preset and advanced graphics, there are no problems either about 80 to 90 FPS dropping to 70 when aiming through the sight. With such performance, you can even use fast light tanks. If desired, if you want some more graphics, you can set it to the maximum. In this case, you will have about 50 to 60 FPS. It seems to me that for a rather slow tank battles, it's quite enough. I declare with all responsibility that the integrated Radeon 780M can be considered a gaming GPU. As for eSports and other games from 2 to 3 years ago, it runs absolutely all games in Full HD at medium or even high graphic settings, sometimes even with ray tracing on. For modern games, of course, it's a bit too slow, and here you will have to deal with blurry FSR and low settings. And speaking of upcoming projects, especially those on Unreal Engine 5, you can probably expect a 720p resolution there, if at all. Unfortunately, squeezing any more performance out of it is a no-go. 
overclocking in MSI Afterburner doesn't work, and there is no PBO option for undervolting in the BIOS. At the same time, when gaming, the 8-core Ryzen 9 literally gets bored. The mini PC has a couple of full-fledged USB-C 4 with Thunderbolt 3 support, so if you wish, you can buy and connect an external box for a video card. 4 PCIe 3.0 lanes would allow you to run a 12GB RTX 3060. The only disadvantage of this approach is the cost of Thunderbolt boxes for video cards. But while the gaming performance of this iGPU is by no means record-breaking by modern standards, the Radeon 780M is very good in terms of multimedia capabilities. It can even process 8K videos in AV1 with 60fps, and USB 4 allows you to connect TVs with such resolutions. The network connectivity of this device is also quite on the level. If Wi-Fi 6E is no longer surprising, then a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet in a mini PC allows you to transfer data at speeds of 300 megabytes per second. And so far, it's quite difficult to find such a carrier who would offer this kind of speed. I don't know about you, but I like these mini PCs. After running all the tests, it occurs to me how fast technological progress is going. However, you have to pay a lot for this. Such a PC costs a little over $600, and without the RAM and SSD, somewhere around $500. The integrated GPU has left two impressions. AMD has done a great job indeed. This is the GTX 1650 level. But why couple an 8-core CPU to such graphics? You could as well use a slower processor and make it cheaper. In any case, the machine handles eSports games in Full HD without any issues. You can even use a fast 144Hz monitor. And the fresh architecture RDNA 3 allows you to decode literally any video, even 8K HDR, which allows you to use this mini PC as a top-end multimedia player. So this portable desktop will definitely find its niche. We were also asked to check its video rendering performance. Our test 3-minute video in Premiere Pro in 4K was rendered in 10 minutes, but only the CPU was involved. Premiere decided not to use the GPU, although GPU acceleration was enabled. This was MK. My name is Mikhail Krashen. I'll see you again. Bye.